Hey, this is Red Ranger from Bard's Beards, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you Step one is to import your sketch, which I already have here, onto whatever digital art software you're using. I use Autodesk because it's free, it's professional, and I just like it. So what I know how to use. Once you've uploaded your picture, you want to make sure you have a layer on top of it that's blank that you can draw on, and the outlining process begins. This can be a kind of grueling process, but it's really worth it. So outlining on a tablet is definitely not a one-for-one -one for drawing on paper. There are some advantages, there are some disadvantages. You can zoom really far in, that's an advantage, but the disadvantages is you lose track of where you are on your picture. So just things to be aware of while you're doing that. Try and stick with your lines. I even try and choose the middle of my line because I can get a finer brush on Autodesk than I can with just a pencil. And so I'll try and stick in the middle of my line because the line I'm drawing is smaller so that everything stays the same kind of shape and still looks smooth. Something that you'll notice as I do the wrinkles on my clothes is that I'm asking myself the question, where would this get pushed? How does gravity move it? How tight are the clothes? That can change. Where, just Essentially, where's the tension? That'll determine what kind of lines and what kind of shading you're gonna want on your clothes. Okay, it needs to be acknowledged that I'm growing, I'm not a perfect artist at all, but one of the things that I'm notorious for, which my wife, Sapphire Sorceress, is always helping me with, is making sure I get heads the right size. And so what I'm doing here is taking the head and making it bigger because I guess my thing, uh, without me wanting it to be my thing, is making little peanut heads on big bodies. So here's me just correcting the size of my head. As I was doing my eyes, I struggled a little bit, but I came to the conclusion that the best way to make the iris, the pupil, was just to go as a, under a layer. So add a layer underneath, draw a circle, and then erase it, and then combine the layers so that I had a nice 
uh, spherical shape that I could work with that fit inside the eyelid. Okay, not very visible yet, but I have my finished outline and now I'm going to duplicate it so I have two layers with the same thing, one on top of the other, and with the bottom layer, which is the original layer, I'm going to start erasing the in-between lines. This is because they don't actually uh, need to be in the final picture, but that way I can still look at the top layer, I can turn that on and off in visibility, and know where I need to shade. We're officially getting to the point where the picture is going to start coming together, which is super exciting. And the first step here is just to start putting in your base color. So I just choose the colors that I think are a good medium for everything. So not the lowest color or the, the brightest color that you'll see across a, a single item. Just a good medium color and we'll add the low lights and the highlights in a minute. In the middle of this process, I came to terms with the fact that that mustache was not my mustache, and I have problems with that, so I just kind of thickened it up at the top a little bit and made it look a little less like a, I don't know, whale fin. At this point we're ready to begin shading, and shading is actually huge. So what you want to do is you want to use the airbrush tool if you're using Autodesk, that's what I use at least. I choose the color that I had as the base color, and then I lower the, uh, the brightness of it by about 10 points. It definitely pays as you're doing this to already know where you want your light source to be. I'm going to have fire coming out of my guy's hand, the one that's sticking out, so it's easy for me to know, okay, well then the darkest parts are the parts that are hidden or furthest away from that.
Okay, now we're going in and we're going to do the fire. And funny enough, as I'm making this video, Sapphire Sorceress is actually working on a project where she's using one of the fire tools that I'm going to use to trace around the hand. And I was kind of struggling because I couldn't figure out why the fire wouldn't get big enough. So I just used it as an outline around the hand and I kind of finagled the rest. But actually, if I had turned off my... There's a little brush tool, you'll see it's a little blue box in the top right. If you would have turned that off, then you could press with your finger and the flames would get much larger. So if you're going to use flames, not a bad way to go. It is officially time for highlights, which is super exciting and super fun. I really think it adds this final layer. Now, for some of this, I went through and I did what I did with the low lights, and I just increased the brightness of the color by 10 points. But it can also be helpful if, since my the source of my lighting is fire and it's a red and an orange fire, to include some red and orange lights to go through and just maybe airbrush some hues across the person to show that that's where the light is coming from and that's actually what's lighting it up, it really adds a layer to it. Finally, the way I animated it was just by, I had the fire on a separate layer, and I went to the transform tool and I moved it just a little bit left and right, and added these together on uh, an application. You can use Movie Maker, which comes with some of the older computers, or you can use Photos. Just increase the speed, and you have your animation. Okay, so here is the final picture, and here is the final animation. Overall, if I had to take a swing, I would say this project took north of five hours. I want to say thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe to see more content like this. And please let us know in the comment section if you did a version like this, how it went. Or tag us in your post on Instagram so we can see it.